Who am I? Why am I here? Where am I going? In the name of progress, modern man has tried to answer those questions without reference to God. But the answers that came back were not exhilarating, but dark and terrible. You are the accidental byproduct of nature. There is no reason for your existence. All you face is death. Modern man thought that in killing God, he had freed himself from everything that repressed and stifled him. Instead, he discovered that in killing God, he had unwittingly killed himself. For if God does not exist, man's life is ultimately absurd. If God does not exist, then man and the universe are inevitably doomed to death. Like all biological organisms, man must die. His life is but a spark in the infinite darkness, a spark that appears, flickers, and then dies forever. Scientists tell us that the universe is expanding, and as it does so, it grows colder and colder. Eventually, there will be no heat at all. There will be no light. There will be no life. This is not science fiction. If God does not exist, then we are inevitably doomed to extinction. Now, what does all this imply? It means that life itself is absurd. It means that the life we do have is ultimately without meaning, value, or purpose. If each individual person passes out of existence when he dies, what ultimate significance can be assigned to his life? His life might be important relative to certain other events, but if all of the events are ultimately meaningless, what can be the ultimate significance of influencing any of them? Mankind is thus no more ultimately significant than a swarm of mosquitoes, for their end is all the same. This is the horror of modern man. Because he ends in nothing, he ultimately is nothing. But it gets even more distressing, for if life ends in the grave, it makes no ultimate difference whether you live as Joseph Stalin or as a Mother Teresa. If your destiny is ultimately unrelated to your behavior, then you may as well just live as you please. Moral values are either just expressions of personal taste or else the byproducts of biological evolution and social conditioning. Who's to say whose values are right and whose are wrong? Now think of what that means. It means that it is impossible to condemn war, oppression, or crime as evil. To kill someone or to love someone is morally equivalent. Our predicament is that it is impossible to live consistently and happily with such a worldview. The atheist philosopher Bertrand Russell held that moral values are simply expressions of personal taste. And yet Russell admitted that he could not live that way. He therefore found his own worldview, and I quote, incredible. I do not know the solution, he confessed. If death stands with open arms at the end of life's trail, then what is the goal of life? Is there no reason for life? If its destiny is a cold death in the recesses of outer space, then the answer is yes, it is pointless. We need to wake up and understand the gravity of the alternatives before us. If God exists, then there is hope for man. But if God does not exist, then all we are left with is despair. Faced with an atheistic worldview, the philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre realized that life is absurd. In his play, No Exit, he tragically portrayed the life of man as hell. The final words of the play might serve 
as an atheistic mantra. Well, let's get on with it.